the introduction to matte paintings. Norman Dawn is one of the earliest uses of matte paintings. Norman Dawn used matte paintings in the 1907 film Missions of California. The only matte painting used in this film was to portray one of the missions of California. One of the best examples of a matte painter is Michael Pangrazio. His works include The Empire Strikes Back, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Temple of Doom, Young Sherlock Holmes, The Hobbit and the Disney Cinematic Logo. Michael won an Emmy for his work in 1990 for the film By Dawn's Early Light and was famous for certain sets including the tractor beam in Star Wars A New Hope, Government Warehouse in Raiders of the Lost Ark, Pankot Palace in the Temple of Doom, and a stained glass window which was scanned into a Lucasfilms Pixar computer for digital manipulation in young Sherlock Holmes. His outstanding work with matte paintings earned him a place as an extra in Star Wars. My next example of a famous map painter is Chris Evans. Some of his works include Star Wars Return of the Jedi, The Dark Crystal, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, Willow, The Ewok Adventure, Titanic and The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Chris earned multiple awards for his works, including an Emmy for Outstanding Special Visual Effects in The Ewok Adventure and a nomination for an Academy Award for his work on Willow. Chris submitted his work to Industrial Light and Magic, for which he eventually became the head of the matte painting department until 1989, where he left and joined Matte World Digital as a painter and art director. Matte paintings were originally produced by painting onto glass of a blank space placed where the footage would be. This glass would cover a pre-recorded tape in which a scene would take place. This was used to create the illusion of a much larger set that doesn't actually exist. I'm now going to show you a clip of the government warehouse from Indiana Jones. In this clip, the warehouse does not actually exist, and is simply a matte painting that was painted by Michael Pangrazio, which took three months to produce. This matte painting was made to create the illusion of a worker who is placing a crate within a large warehouse. Frank Ordaz is yet another famous map painter. His most famous works was working on the hangar in Star Wars and the Endor Forest in the early Star Wars trilogy. How have map paintings changed today? Map paintings nowadays are often created digitally rather than painted by hand as this is a much faster and more conventional method of creating a false set. The use of digital paintings removes the need to spend money on a large physical set that could take months to build or prepare. The following video is an interview with a map painter. What inspired you to become a map painter? Um, I was inspired to become a map painter because I, I've always been interested in the idea of creating new environments. And being a map painter is a way in which you can be really creative, you can come up with your own um, worlds, your own environments, whether it's fantasy, science fiction, you know, or it's an existing landscape you can't get to. It just gives you that opportunity to be really creative and create worlds that maybe don't exist. How do you feel the use of map paintings in media has changed over the years and are they still relevant? Uh, well, map paintings themselves are still relevant today, yes. Um, the main thing that's changed, obviously, is the technology in which we actually create matte paintings. <coughs> Excuse me. So, obviously, when people, start first, when people first started doing this technique, um, to create a matte painting, you actually had to paint your matte painting on a piece of glass. And that piece of glass was placed in front of the camera. It would have, like, a hole cut out of it, um, maybe like that. And then you'd shoot through, and through that gap in the painting, you'd film whatever was behind it. So all like little characters, you know, people actually on a, on a studio back lot moving about. So it actually had to be drawn physically onto glass, filmed, you know, with the action taking place behind it. Um, soon after that, um, you're able to do track mats and travelling mats and things like that, and actually do double exposures and kind of incorporate in a slightly different way. But now, obviously, we do it more digitally. So it's not painted as such, it's digitally painted. Um, there's so many reference images you can just download and use. 
uh, you know, online to create stuff, but it's still drawn. People will still draw, you know, but in a computer and do it digitally. And obviously that stuff is composited in a much more straightforward way now than it was back then. Are physical movie sets or matte paintings more effective? Mm, depends on the budget of the film. If you've got a really low budget and you're trying to actually build a vast, you know, let's say futuristic environment, if you haven't got the money, it's going to look terrible. But for, you know, obviously much cheaper, if you've got someone that's really skilled, you could create a really great matte painting that really sells that environment and that looks really good. And you haven't got to worry about actually building it, okay? Because building it brings a whole new set of problems, uh, you know, to the, the set. So if you've got a low budget, a matte painting will work better. If you've got limitless budget, then building an actual set is probably going to be the way forward. Not a matte painting. Here is my attempt at creating a digital map painting.